Well, you know, I've been the anti-human trafficking um, ambassador of the State Department and um, had headed an NGO, Polaris Project, working on fighting human trafficking in the United States, but most recently before coming to Georgetown, I was a um, senior advisor to the company LexisNexis, uh, which is very interested in its corporate responsibility, fighting human trafficking and building a, a business coalition against human trafficking. Well, I know it's a tough time uh, grappling with core courses, and, and uh, it, it, there is uh, a, um, a moment where you're worried that you have to have an, you know, your plan completely mapped out um, about what your priorities are and you know, what you're going to be um, casting yourself as. I think it's important to remember that you have a little bit of time for experimenting. You have time to develop a handful of um, areas of specialty, not only through courses but through internships. Um, he, you want to be able to be ready for flexibility in a career in the future. Well, I mean, I think it, that most MSFS students will have the same kind of experience I did of um, a, a, a career path that uh, evolves. I mean, I've worked in the university, in think tanks, in the House and the Senate, um, multiple jobs at the State Department, an NGO, and then now back to the university. And I think students need to be prepared for both in the issues that they focus on and in the setting that there's going to be a lot of change. And in fact, to be prepared for jobs that you don't know um, you're going to be in or might not exist today. Um, you know, we would have had no idea that there would be so many people um, going to work for contractors and engaged in post-conflict or security situations. Um, there will be other jobs that emerge, and so being more prepared for change and prepared for specific things is really the important part. Well, I first got exposed to human trafficking as a Senate Foreign Relations Committee staffer, and I played a bit part in 10 years ago putting together a comprehensive U.S. law on human trafficking, and over the last 10 years between that law and uh, a U.N. treaty, the Palermo Protocol, many countries, you know, over half of the countries in the world have put in place human trafficking laws, but it really shows the difference between rule of law on paper and rule of law um, that's implemented. And so the important thing is to get, you know, people actually punished for enslaving someone for sexual exploitation or forced labor, um, and uh, giving victims access to justice. Uh, at, at such an important thing worldwide, and something I care about more broadly than human trafficking, is rule of law in reality. Well, I think it's inseparable. I feel very strongly about this, and it's actually an issue that um, concentrators who take ethics in international relations, MSFS 600, will grapple with a lot. Um, I, I think it's uh, interesting how people call, um, you know, a self-interested policy realism when it, it, you know, a truly realistic policy would take account for making sure that there is pluralism, a voice for the people, access to justice for people. Um, it's manifestly the case that good governance, rule of law, um, human rights serve stability and, and prosperity in the world. Um, and you do need to make choices. You need to um, look at short-term choices versus longer-term choices. And it's worth sort of thinking in the, about those as ethical, not like big E abstract philosophy ethics, but lowercase ethics. Um, decision-making that everyone's going to need to make coming out of the MSFS program, government, international organizations, NGOs, private sector jobs. Well, I've, I've been blessed with um, getting to meet a lot of interesting people. Uh, Kofi Annan, um, a Secretary General, um, President Bush, President Clinton at the Clinton Global Initiative. Um, Bono, um, when I was a Hill staffer. But actually, um, I'd highlight um, getting a chance to meet Li Dengwei, the president of Taiwan. I was uh, I went over with members of Congress uh, to Taipei, 
um, a month after Lee Dung Wei was elected as the first fully democratically elected president of Taiwan. And uh, in we came, we'd forgotten to bring a camera, and my um, boss, the congressman, instructed me to buy a disposable camera. And I was embarrassed because this is crazy. We were going to go into the president's office, do this. So I pull out the disposable camera, and Lee Dung Wei sort of goes like this, waving, no, no. And you know, the official photographers took over. But I got an opportunity to um, to shake his hand, and I I really believe that um, the self determination of of peoples. Um, the success story of countries that um, have their prosperity bound up in democracy is really important, um, and that's kind of an emblem um, for me. I actually, you know, keep that photograph of that meeting on my wall.